Tuesday, May 31st, 2016, it is 4.30 uh, p.m. at Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Uh, we will roll right downhill tonight. Um, we have a uh, proclamation of retirement, Darrell Bailey, uh, firefighter. Uh, looking forward to thanking him for his service. Got a proclamation, Juneteenth. Uh, Mayor's Award, Chris Clements is in the house. Uh, we'll be seeing you next Monday. Uh, first is a public hearing. <clears throat> it's consideration of voluntary severance of territory located east of 11, uh, 312 Valley View Lane, Burlington, Iowa. Mr. Tisman. A request from property owner, uh, 11, uh, 312 Valley View Lane, um, to sever the territory. Pull up a map here. As shown by the, the hash here, uh, it's located north of Crystal Drive, uh, northwest of Crystal Drive and north of Florence Avenue and east of Cliff Road. Uh, if you see the red line, uh, kind of see the red line, uh, this is the city county border uh, with the co county being uh, to the north and west and to the city to the south and east. Uh, this property is a largely a ravine area um, with limited access. There's no access off Crystal or Diamond Drives or Florence Avenue. Uh, the only access is off of Valley View Lane, which is a private drive, approximately 12, 14 feet wide. If you've been out there, it's a very narrow road. Um, uh, so access would be off this road uh, with the potential for possibly one home in this area. Uh, there's no uh, access to city services for utilities. Um, so they requested to be uh, severed, which would bring them from the city of Burlington into the county uh, uh, based on their limited access and uh, avail limited availability of uh, services and utilities. So um, that's the request before us. County okay with this? Yeah. yeah the, the severance is very different from uh, annexation. The notification just goes to the county and the Secretary of State after it's completed. So okay. It's a straightforward process. All right. <coughs> no problem. Really? With you, but Not on our end, no. Okay. Okay. The, uh, the only access to Valley View is, is uh, uh, through uh, Cliff Road. Mm -hmm. The only access to Cliff Road, the county portion of Cliff Road is through the city of Burlington. I think what, I, I think we have kind of a, a uh, an island out there, if you would, of, of uh, you know, people living in the county and uh, more or less enjoying city services. Um, there's a there's there's a lot of property out there that that has to use city services to get to their to their property. Um, I, I don't know that we're doing the city a favor by uh, uh, severing that property, um, and the, and I think that there's city services close enough that uh, um, if they wanted to develop that, that they they could uh, they could get sewer and water and, and uh, utilities back there with little difficulty. There there, there would be some expense involved. The services just aren't that far away. Good points. <laughs> what well, I mean, what what's the why are they why are they wanting to do this? Because they want to. What's the main driver on this? Well, because of the cost of extending city services, essentially, um, and then access through, to the county through the, or to the property through the county. Uh, everything that they access is through the county, and all the property surrounding them are through the county and. Uh, I think water stops somewhere up here on cliff and there are these are all on septic back here so council you guys got to, any other questions or thoughts on there uh, not right now okay nope. all right well we got something to think about on that one uh we're gonna move, roll downhill next we have uh public hearing a consideration of a permanent encroachment agreement with our guild of burlington inc 
for encroachment into city right of way at 301 Jefferson Street, Burlington, Iowa. <clears throat> Mr. Tisler. Uh, they requested uh, encroachment, um, essentially for an outdoor lounge area uh, adjacent to their property. Uh, they've done some remodel work and uh, kind of reconfiguration on the inside and looking to add some additional service uh, through their property through an outdoor uh, seating area uh, adjacent to the art center on uh, Jefferson Street on the south side of Jefferson. Um, it's very easy to see here, but it'd be directly in front of the, the windows on the um, property there. Uh, they are required per encroachment agreement to maintain six feet of clear sidewalk, um, which they would do at the edge of the enclosed area um, from the edge of the roped off area to the curb. Um, so this would allow essentially permanent outdoor seating uh, for their use uh, through this encroachment and then maintaining the barrier through the planters and rope and having outdoor uh, chairs and tables adjacent to the building. Um, as I mentioned, one of the conditions is maintaining the six foot of unobstructed sidewalk clearance adjacent to the encroaching area. Um, and then a couple other conditions during extended periods of non-use just during the winter or other periods where they're not using it, uh, encroachment shall be removed from the right of way and shall not be stored upon the sidewalk area so they don't store tables and chairs uh, throughout the winter there. But um, it is something we are looking at. This does meet our current uh, code for encroachment policy. It meets all of our standards. but something we are exploring as we see more development downtown, uh, looking at our encroachment policy and uh, comparing, seeing sidewalk cafes and different things other communities do to see if we need to make any changes. Mm -hmm. And we would bring that forward uh, probably in the next couple months. But under our current policy, this meets all our requirements. And one provision it talks about in the encroachment agreement is uh, if we do make some changes, which I would assume this would still meet, that they, they follow those in the future as well. So. Any questions? No, nope. I think it'll I think be a neat like addition. Outdoor seating downtown is going to be a plus, plus, plus. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It's uh, it's working in a lot of other communities, and uh, not that that's why I want to see that, but yeah, I agree. Uh, you guys have any other questions on that? Okay. Good deal. Uh, next, we have a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of Summer Street right of way located east of the property at 215 Summer Street, Burlington, Iowa. Um, what she got on that? Uh, no changes from the previous reading. Again, this is the, the dead end of Summer Street. Uh, they're looking to expand the use of their property and based on the terrain uh, to their north and west with uh, hillside down to Walgreens, they're not able to add uh, a garage or other amenities to the property. And this would allow, based on the setback, some uh, a garage up in this portion for them. So uh, there are no utility utilities in that area and no future plans to extend that right away. We can waive that reading. I don't see no, why not. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, number seven, motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of South 14th Street right away, located west of the property at 1412 Hillary Avenue, Burlington, Iowa. No changes on this one. Uh, either this is uh, adding 12 feet would bring uh, his property into conformance. Uh, having his fence and shed on his property um, wouldn't allow, uh, I think he would had desired to have more right away, but that would get into utility issues and this will, there are no utilities underneath this area that's uh, requested to be vacated. Uh, so it won't get into any utility uh, issues uh, not being on right away. They'll all remain in city right away. Do you guys have any issue with this or any problem with this at all? Okay. No, we pretty well told the property owner I think we were gonna. It's like, what's that? I think we pretty well told the property owner that we're probably gonna allow this to happen. I, I, I still don't see any, uh, well, I didn't then, I don't see any reason, so I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have any problem waving on, on that. No. 
So do our intent. So what does that one say? Go to our intent. Okay, good deal. Uh, moving number eight, uh, resolution of intent uh, to proceed with Miller Valentine Group for purchase and redevelopment of the Apollo School site at 1201 Valley Street, Burlington, Iowa. You have a resolution in here uh, for approval um, to uh, work with Miller Valentine for the redevelopment of that site, at least your intent to do that. Uh, they have, have attached to that, it's listed as Exhibit A, uh, their letter request of what they would like for this process. They'd like to purchase the land for 50000 or per, you know, purchase the site for 50000 uh, with a $5,000 refundable uh, earnest money piece that would become non-refundable if and when they receive tax credits. Uh, they'd, their goal is to go after tax credits this fall, similar to what was done last fall, um, with uh, anticipation that if they did do that, uh, it would probably be next April 2017 where where they would find out uh, whether they'd receive those tax credits or not. Um, they have several other pieces that they need to get done uh, in order to make this project work. Eric, do you know what all they're looking at doing? They're looking at uh, getting the property on the National Register of Historic uh, Places to uh, qualify for historic tax credits, state and local tax credits. Uh, also looking at Brownfield, Grayfield uh, tax credit program to qualify for those. Um, doing a lot of their architectural design and um, background work and preparing for their low-income housing tax credit because they're three primary sources. Uh, included in their request that they have in here is uh, they're asking for a 15-year 100% TIF rebate on this project so they can meet the local and local participation full credits on that. Um, they do need to, I, I'm sure as they're doing their pro formas, they'll, if and when they do go through this full process with us, they'll have a pro forma that will show where that lays out within it uh, to meet the requirements, similar to what they did last last year when they had applied with us on the Salter School site. This does not bind you to doing this resolution that's on the agenda does not bind you to this TIF rebate. There are several steps that you need to go through in order to actually do that. Uh, you have to have an amendment to the TIF plan, uh, or is that right? Or urban yeah. renewal plan. Um, you also have to, this is a s contingent sale of the land, so you have to have a and development agreement, so you have to have a public hearing with a 30-day notice before that occurs. Uh, this is essentially telling the developer in a non-binding way that you're willing to work with them and that you're committed. If you're going to be doing a project, you're, you plan on doing it with them this next fall um, so that they can start the process. So they'll, they'll in end up investing, I don't know how much they'll have to invest, but along the, the way over the next few months in doing the Brownfield, Grayfield credits, doing the, the process to get it on the state I mean, we're going to have, for historic purposes, we're going to have to be involved with that, but they'll have some effort that's involved in that too, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, until they actually get a development agreement on it. The one point on this request that I would recommend that if you're going to do it that you see changed is on that earnest money. Uh, I think that I just think that five thousand dollars should be a non-refundable. I mean, that's that's my recommendation. But I agree with you. I agree. If they're not willing to do that, I mean, we're going to spend that much in attorney fees to go through this process. They should be willing to commit to doing that to to cover a, a portion of our costs to make this at least a fee, feasible thing for consideration. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I don't, matter of fact, I don't think any of the citizens are going to be mad at us for that. So. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, and if it if it if this doesn't happen, um, it's going to delay other action that we could be taking. Correct. And, and what could cost us a lot more. So yeah, it's and hard. it's, it's and a drop dead issue for me. If it's if if they don't want to agree to it, I don't, I'm not in favor of this at all. 
Okay. I'm, I'm with you. We'll make sure we communicate that. I've asked Eric to try to get that communicated that I think that's what needs to be done. We haven't heard back from them as of yet, but you just with the understanding that that's kind of what it will we'll convey to them. And if they say that that $5,000, they're not willing to put that as a non-refundable, if they drop the project, you're, you're okay that you don't see that on the agenda next week. I'm no, totally fine with that. Okay. I do have a question though, um, Eric, maybe you can answer it. If they proceed with this and put this building on the National Register of Historic Places, does that put a limit on us and what we can do with the no. building? No, the National Register is more of an honorary designation. It okay. allows tax credits. Right. Uh, the only thing that would limit it, if it's on the local register, then it goes to the Historic Preservation Commission. But you can demolish, change, do whatever to National Register properties. It just affects whether you get tax credits through the state and federal or not. I wanted to make sure that was clear. Yep. Thank you. And, and that is an important point. Uh, but where we stand as a backstop, as we did when we first acquired this property, is to ultimately demo this property if something else isn't able to be done and what I've heard communicated at least no vote on this but just general discussion is that the intent would be to if this is unsuccessful to try to move forward with the demolition proceedings next year I understand a year from now something else could come up but Everybody's good? For me. <clears throat> All right, then. Uh, next, we have the resolution accepting the downtown parking study for the city of Burlington. This is based on the study that was presented uh, by Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission, uh, Zach James, here um, a month or so ago. Um, we're going to run through that really quick again. The whole. No, just. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's a good one. Plus, his heart. Plus, his heart. Again, this is just uh, accepting that uh, study and then directing uh, staff to work with uh, DPI and stakeholders, Southeast Iowa Regional Planning, uh, to work towards implementation on different aspects of that plan and bring parking improvement solutions in for consideration and implementation uh, forward to the city council. So. So simply accepting the plan and then directing staff to work with uh, DPI, regional planning, other stakeholders to bring forward recommendations to, for implementation. Okay. Zach is here. Uh, if you have any questions, um, our, our plan is on the front page of the city website as well for anyone else that wants to see that. Um, hey, Zach, would you, would you come to the I'd, podium for a I do have a question to ask that. Uh, I had our full presentation ready to go again if you guys wanted to see it. But Jim's told me on a few occasions that I think I think you guys probably heard it thoroughly enough at this point. So, but uh, did you have specific questions or? I just wanted to make you come up front. Uh, does anybody got any questions? <laughs> yes, I, I do. Is it true that you won some award for this study? Yeah, that is correct. We got a. Can you explain that to us? Please? Yeah. So there's a. We're a regional planning organization, and there's a national association, uh, National Association of Development Organizations, NATO, and uh, they have regional transportation awards uh, every year, and uh, we received an award for the, the work we did on this study. And so uh, myself and Jared Lasseter from our office are going to be going to Chattanooga here in uh, about a week and a half. And Sweet. Going for the conference, but accepting that award as well. So I'm make sure you wear your bracelet when you <laughs> Do you need uh, another need one figure from Jason? I have one. Okay. <laughs> I can take it with if you want. Okay. Just Thank you, Jim. Thank that, you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Tell Mr. Lassiter, is that his last name? Yes. Yeah. Make sure you pass that on to tell him. Absolutely. Uh, good, good work. Good work. Are you guys, uh, you guys good? Or any? No. Yes, yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Mr. Tislin, are you good? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next is a resolution approving refund of liquor license for Spirits and Dreams, LLC, Crazy Coyote, any problems, council? Okay. Are they out of business or changing owners or what is the deal there? Not quite sure. I think that's an out of business. It's a refund of the remaining license. Like Stephanie knows. No. no. <laughs> Kathleen, Kathleen, Kathleen processes those. Okay. All right. 
Check with Kathleen. Okay. Uh, next a resolution authorizing an internal loan from general fund to tax increment revenue fund. Stephanie. So Jim and I are going to tag team this resolution, but this is going to become an annual resolution that we're going to approve, and this is to help us pay for expenses um, that are coming out of the general fund to do all the different TIF projects. Um, mostly it's attorney fees and staff time. So we've set the amount um, for this fiscal year, fiscal year 16 at 20,000. Um, like Jim can say, we, we have a lot more probably time and money into that, but we thought that was a good figure um, to start with. And then in July, I'll um, bring up the internal loan for fiscal year 17. And it'll be something we do annually each fiscal year, but I'll do it at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, basically, you'll approve this resolution. I'll certify this as debt, that it's an internal loan, so then we can get these fees paid back with TIF increment funds. Okay. Council, Any questions? questions or anything to add, Jim? The, the main thing that this is covering is Bob Jostin's bills to us that we have when as we go through these projects. Um, we. This last year, we had a significant amount of costs with uh, doing plan amendments for adding the, the ability to do TIF for several different projects, including the Dresser Rand site, the Apollo School Building site. Um, we had the closing document, and I can't remember what all the other projects, Agency Streets projects, uh, Division Street uh, with the, and the roundabout for Silgan, um, doing a plan amendment for uh, the sale of the manor site, uh, we, had, we had a lot happen this last year, and we ate up a good chunk of this. All those are costs that have been, been paid for out of the general fund. This allows us to reimburse ourselves. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on that? You guys good? Good. All right. All right, next we have a resolution establishing a no parking zone on the east side of Cottonwood Court, extending from Weingart Drive to the north, approximately 65 feet. City Manager, Council, Mr. Mayor, Chris Clements, uh, Interim Public Works Director. Um, this is uh, the area we're talking about on the map here. Um, to the left, you can see the casino ramp to the south, you see Weingard Drive, and that's Cottonwood Court that goes to the north towards Mount Pleasant Street. Um, up in the right would be the kind of the overflowed parking for Autumn Heights. Um, the blue portion you see there at the bottom, that's the portion we're asking that be changed to a no parking zone. Um, it's the first 65 feet uh, north of, of uh, Weingard. The original crest came from uh, Catfish Bend Casinos, the, their officials. Um, their, the issues they had there was the, a couple of their employees that had accidents. Um, they were also having trouble with their buses and their vans making that corner. Um, we didn't find any real accident issues there when we looked at the reports. Um, but I did also talk to uh, a lot of the city people that drive that every day, um, that drive bigger vehicles. Um, we talked to uh, bus people, fire people, and streets people. Um, they all agreed that there was an issue there. If you met a car coming south and you were going north, it's hard to get turned and get onto that street. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yep. Why 65 instead of 50? There's a fire hydrant right at about 65 foot, so I was going to put the sign right about where the fire hydrant is. Okay. <laughs> That's the reason I picked that number. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, you can do it anywhere from uh, we, we can make it any length we want. I guess yeah, we can make it 40. Hydrant. We I mean, can, that makes yeah. Sense, though, with the fire yeah, yeah. That's why I picked that particular number. There's a, there's a fire hydrant about that that location. Um, and uh, I also sat out there and monitored traffic, seeing the same issues people were talking about. Um, the red you can see on the other side that is already no parking. Just so you know, I mean that's a no parking area already. The blue on the the right again is what we're asking to be changed to no parking. Uh, the red will remain no parking also. Um, Cottonwood Court's roughly uh, 31 feet wide, back back of curb to back of curb. That gives you about 30 foot of street width. 
Um, so when you have a car parked on that side and there's a car sitting on the other side, you roughly have about a 10 foot lane to 12 foot lane to, to make a turn onto there with. So it is somewhat, you know, narrow. Um, I just said that. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I already said that too. I'm getting ahead of myself there. So, um, if it was straight, you know, up and down there, that's that's plenty of room to get a bus or a big truck or something through. But when you have to make that transition on the turn, you know, you're swinging out trying to get straight and back up. It's just not enough. Um, so therefore. Uh, us out of public works are suggesting that you guys do approve that as a no parking zone in that area. Okay. You guys good? Questions? No. Are there other areas in town that you have requests for no parking spots? Um, or how does that get started? Other than typically it's done by a request, yeah, of, of a citizen or a, we did one on Willow a while back uh, um, shortly after the school opened right. and uh, basically, that one was generated by the increased traffic. Um, before, it hadn't been an issue, but with the increased traffic in the area, then, you know, it became an issue. I, I know if you're coming up uh, Angular, headed east, and you come to Summer Street, it's hard to see. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Looking yes. north at that corner. For instance, and I, I know mm -hmm. there's probably a lot more of them around town like that. Yeah, and I'm not so sure. We, one of the one direction there isn't signed that way, but... Uh, there's a lot of other issues there too with walls and trees and the, yeah. sh the shape of the intersection right. that angular and summer yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah anyway that's a side issue okay could I ask you one more question sure unrelated well, uh, sure roundabout where are we on roundabout? um they're still doing land acquisition I, uh, I don't know exactly where that's at the plans are well on their way I don't know if we have a turn dirt date for sure yet or not. All right. I can get that to you though. I can talk to Ryan in the morning. Okay, thanks, Chris. I, I got a quick one too. Uh, if you don't, off the top of your head, I'll get an answer from you later. Just it was a text to me before I came in. But uh, Kroger Street did, is that one of the streets that we just changed over to uh, the parking? Don't believe we've changed any parking on Kroger Street. No. Okay. I'll, I'll get with. I'll okay. Get with you on that. I'll okay. Thank you, Chris. Alrighty, we'll keep moving. Uh, the next one is a resolution establishing West Avenue from West Avenue to, De I'm sorry. A resolution establishing West Avenue. I'm gonna get this out. <laughs> a resolution establishing West Burlington Avenue from West Avenue to Division Street as a heavy track route. I got it out. I had almost as much trouble typing that as you did <laughs> saying it, so don't feel bad. Um, this is the area, uh, basically we got West Avenue on the south, um, West Burlington Avenue on the west. Um, you got Division Street on the north there. Um, right now, this um, the green is already a heavy truck route. The yellow is what we're asking to be added into that truck route. Um, mostly this is, is done to kind of clear up the signage and make it more clear with all the increased truck traffic and stuff that's going to be out there around that area that that it's very clear where the truck routes are and where they're not um, that's always been heavy enough to be a truck route just it's never been changed to a truck route because of the traffic didn't really I guess require it mm -hmm. questions no makes sense get her done Okay, we've got some uh, public hearing set for June 20th. Uh, first consideration of an ordinance rezoning a portion of 2400 Sunnyside Avenue to include a PUD uh, planned uh, unit development overlay zone, Arbor View Estates, PUD. Uh, anything on that? It's area behind Zeisers will be bringing forward a proposal for a residential development in that area. Just north of Sunnyside. Right. And the other one is the consideration of City of Burlington Neighborhood Stabilization Program 08 NSP 003, uh, 11 NSP 003. Anything on that? 
it's just an open public hearing during the course of our uh, grant, uh, just allowing any comment and give an update on where we're at progress-wise. No action on it, just an open and closed public hearing. Okay. All right. Treasurer's report. Annette tonight she's at a soccer game so um, the April's treasures report was in the packet so um, if anybody had any specific questions I'll just go over a few things um, our downtown facade deficits going down we're down to ninety one hundred dollars so hopefully I'm not sure how often Charlie's on top of them to to get them to pay but we're that's a lot lower than it has been so um, basically there's um, nothing that was happening unusual um, we did receive in April. We received a larger, um, our larger tax payment, so it brought the general fund out of deficit. But um, the rest of our transfers will be made in June to get that to the ending fund balance where we project it to be. Um, if back on capital projects um, again, some of the larger ones are just transfers that, or the ones that are in deficits are transfers that haven't been made yet. But um, the good news is. Uh, know if Jim has shared it with you but we had a um, the transfer was made in May so you don't see it yet but the money we got for Flint Hills um, we used to wipe out the park and rep deficit to the tune of six hundred and thirty four thousand dollars so it's a nice tune. Mm -hmm. it's very nice so we'll we'll really boast that again when it comes to look at the May treasures report but that's one deficit we had planned to clear out over the next five years so it really it made a difference. It will make a difference going forward. We, sh we should be able to have all the deficit accounts that were sitting there as deficits. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we are at eight and a half million in 2012. We should have them wiped out the end of next budget year. Wow. So. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Burlington. I'm out of here. <laughs> well, we, those, the, the, the two accounts that we should end up with deficits at the end of this year will be the the recplex and the golf course mm -hmm. i think it'll i think it's 150,000 and about 150,000 in one and about 190,000 in the other so. any questions on this treasure oh, report good work good work <laughs> thanks jim as soon as we get done with this meeting take the take the rest of the night off oh thanks a lot <laughs> thank god <laughs> Summer programs, my favorite librarian. Come on down here. Yay. <clears throat> Thank you. This is the Freebird and Freebird Show. We gotta work on our timing so we don't, <laughs> we don't double up like that. Um, so thank you for your time tonight. Um, last year, uh, we came and gave a, a short program to you on things that were coming up in the summer um, that different city departments were involved in. And so I wanted to come again this year and update you on things that we're doing, um, some new things and some things that we had started last year that are coming back around again. So. There's some kids in the area who are out of school already. Um, many others will be done in just two more days. Um, the Burlington students will be done in about two days on Thursday. So we've got a lot of excited kids, um, and probably teachers too, um, that summer vacation is coming up. <laughs> and, um, and we're excited um, at the library. We kind of kick into gear um, in the summer um, with, uh, with summer uh, reading. And I'll, of course, we'll talk about that a little bit too. But what I want to first talk about is our partnership that started last year with the school district. And um, the impetus for this new um, partnership was the free bus rides. That was the first year that free bus rides were offered for kids. And so we got together a few different city departments um, and some people from the school district and met and talked about that. And in that decided, you know, we really need to promote this, make sure people are aware of the resources that are out there for kids and for families. So we did a brochure last year, and, and I think that was great. It was a great first start. Um, and after the summer, we were thinking about it, and I was thinking we really need to expand that, the content and the reach, to the number of people that hear about these things. So I went to the school district, and we talked with Cassie Gersh. She wasn't here last year, so I was 
updating her on what we had done. And she had the great idea that rather than updating the brochure, expanding the brochure, let's take it and go social media instead. Um, and so that's what we've done this year. And I, and I really um, commend her for that idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, she also suggested, instead of trying to send home brochures and things, let's send home a magnet. Because if it makes it home, um, it'll be easily put up on the refrigerator and kept and found when it's needed. And that's one of the things with those brochures. Um, may not make it home, comes home at the end of the year. There's so much stuff coming home at the end of the year. May get lost in the shuffle. And then when you want it, can you find it? Um, so I gave each of you um, one of those magnets there. Um, she had those printed up at the school district. And so they've been going home with kids and parents. We've had them at the library. Um, and she's actually doing another printing of them. So many of them have gone out. So two important things that are on there. One is promoting the free city bus rides for kids. Um, and that is, this is the second year that it's going to happen. You have a, another handout there about the bus rides. And um, you can see, let me find mine here. There it is. So you can see that um, last year there were over 6,000 rides that were given um, with um, the majority being June and July, not as much um, in August. And a lot of those were um, kids who were going from the rec programs. Um, so the, the summer day camp that um, the city does went to the um, schools for the food program that they do. So we were able to um, combine those two programs um, and, and let them work together. Um, but also kids going to the schools for summer school programs, um, going to the library and the other things as well. So for 2016, um, I was just, Given this, when I came in, the goal that they have at bus is to go for 7,000 rides. Um, and I do think the more we get the word out about it, the more people can take advantage of this really great resource. Um, free rides will start on Monday, June 6th, so, and then go th until school starts. Um, so that's, it's a great, um, a great resource. And some other data that um, was passed on to me um, is that during the school year, um, about 900 rides per day. Um, but then ridership when school's not in session is about 600 rides per day. And so I know this was talked about last year a little bit, that this um, program, giving the free rides, helps increase the number of rides, which in turn then increases the funding that um, bus program gets. So it really balances out um, and is a good service as well um, as helping that program. So. How, how, uh, how old of a kid do you, do you get a beat to ride for free? <laughs> well, I know on here they put, um, I, I think I probably would put 18 and under, a zero to 18 <laughs> sounds a little, um, but yeah, any, any kid. So a parent, um, care, caregiver, daycare person who's bringing a child could bring, you know, a younger child. Now kids under a certain age ride free all the time anyhow, I believe. Like, you're bringing a baby. I think I think there's some free rides anyhow, but um, but yeah, they you know I don't expect any two-year-olds to be walking onto the bus by themselves. But hey, I did hear. Give me a ride. <laughs> right <laughs> Last summer, I did hear from some people at the library who were um, daycare providers, who had enough kids that it was really hard for them to get out and do anything with them because transportation in their car, they just couldn't get them all in there with the the safety belts, all that kind of stuff. So um, taking them on the bus allowed them to come to some of our summer programs. Sweet. Um, so, so it does get used for a wide range of ages. And I know just from my experience at the library, we had some of our teen volunteers. That was how they were able to come um, and get to the library was using that bus program. I met one of your teen volunteers that oh. was taking the bus. Oh, good. <laughs> and, and I really do, just from my own personal experience too, I want to say that I think um, use the phone number if you've never used the bus before. I did it when my kids first started riding the city bus and Amy, who usually answers the phone there, it's fantastic. She was just awesome. went above and beyond making sure we knew right where to be, when to be there, and how the whole process would work. So anyone who hasn't used it, it can be a little um, confusing at first maybe if you haven't used it, but call and she'll clear it all up for you and um, get you where you need to go. So I wanted to make sure that people who had this magnet had that number so they could call and get that information, how to get around um, using those rides, but also have our Facebook page. This is a new Facebook page that we started up just a couple months ago. And um, I'm happy to say that we have over 400 people that follow our page now. It's even a little higher. That was this morning. So Man, there's a few cool. more. So, um, so I'm glad word is starting to get out. Um, 
and, and that's a good thing. So Burlington Summer 2016, one of the nice things about social media, of course, is we can t continually add to it, we can continually update it. With a brochure, once it's printed, it's done. And if, there was, if the program changes or new programs come along, it, it's just not really feasible to reprint and get out to everybody again. So this um, will really help us in that respect. So just some examples of things. This was a post that went out today um, about a project the South Hill Neighborhood Association is doing. Um, this pool's gonna open on um, June 3rd and the South Hill Neighborhood Association is sponsoring a free swim. Um, so that's clearly the kind of information we wanna get to as many people as possible. All we did was take um, and um, share a post that the pool's Facebook page um, had done. But in just a couple hours, you have 90 people, it's well over 100 now that have, have looked at it. Um, so a lot of what we're doing is sharing information that's already out there, but trying to bring it together in one place to make it easier for parents to find um, and know about. I think the city manager is volunteering to uh, do the first cannonball oh. of the high dive to, okay. to christen the, uh, the event. Make sure you put that on the Facebook page. <laughs> okay, we'll add that. <laughs> um, right after all the council. <laughs> <laughs> and um, another one that we put on, because it's not all city things that we share, um, is when we heard that the Pinta and the Nina are coming be to awesome. Burlington. So we made sure to get that out there for people. Um, and we had quite a few people who've looked at that. Um, and one of the other things that's great about using social media this year is that it's interactive. And you can't see it very well at the bottom, but someone asked us a question about is there a cost? Um, so we were able to answer back to them and, and share that um, information with them. So another fun thing that doesn't happen very often in town, but I um, wanted to make sure people knew about. Of course, we're also getting word out about a lot of the city opportunities in the summer. The swimming lessons at the pool, um, the summer camp um, that's available. You know, at, in my experience as a, as a parent, I, my kids got to do a lot of interesting things in the summer, but a lot of times, too, I was hearing about things after they were over or it was too late to sign up. And so our goal is to make sure that people are, are hearing about all the things that are going on. Because there's really a lot going on in the summers um, for kids. It's just knowing that it's out there and it's available. The school district has a wonderful program in the summer that I, is, I believe, underutilized. There's um, a lot of people could take advantage of this program. Um, free meals are served to all children age 18 and younger who come to their open serving sites. Um, it says no identification is required. Um, parents can come and there's a small fee for them. But So we have free breakfast and lunch service in the city and I think that's really um, something that can't be repeated enough. And a lot of people need to know about that um, and, and could be using that. One of the other great things about social media that I wanted to point out with this one is that when we share stuff, other people can share it too. So you can see here the impact program that Young House has shared our um, link somewhere else. So people can share with their friends, other organizations can share, um, and so word can spread um, with those. I do want to mention before I got this too that we do have a lot of other things on there. So take a look. Um, we share things about Kid Tech U at SCC, about workforce programs, Stars Cave, Art Center, Y programs. Um, so there's a lot of different things. And if you know of something that we don't, haven't shared yet on there, let us know. Be happy to make sure we get that on there and let people know about summer opportunities. We will be sharing um, very soon about the Bookmobile. This last year was um, the first Page year for the Bookmobile. Fuel burning. <laughs> and this was another uh, partnership with the school district. Schottenkirk um, turned one of their f old food trucks into a Bookmobile. They, they did the, the artwork on the outside there. Um, but they put shelves inside and, and made it ready to use um, as a bookmobile. So we provide, the library provides books. Um, and the school district, one of their um, school librarians, um, drives the bus um, around and, um, and makes this service possible. So um, we will be loading the bookmobile on June 8th. And there'll be an open house at the library um, in the morning where people can come and look at it and see what it's about. Um, the next week on um, June 15th is when they'll start their regular Wednesday routes, and they'll do that through July. Um, just as the, the um, transportation is an issue and we, the free bus rides are a great way for people to get to the library, um, it's also, I think, important for us to get out and get to the people. And this is one of the ways that we can do that is with this bookmobiles, to, to go out to different locations. 
So as I mentioned, of course, I have to talk a little bit about summer reading. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, it will be starting up next week on um, June 6th. And all the information is on our website. There's a sports theme this year. Um, the summer reading program, of course, is a lot of fun things that happen. The reason that we do it and why it's important is to prevent summer slide. And that's that phenomenon where kids come back to school um, in the fall and they've not only um, are they, have they stayed at the same schools, but they've lost skills where they have to, um, teachers have to spend time going back over things and, and building up their skills again. Some research I've read has said kids can lose as much as two months worth of their reading skills in one summer. Holds That's, back the other kids too that aren't sliding. Mm -hmm. and, the, um, and so summer reading program is there to help bridge that gap so that kids do keep um, at a steady level or maybe even increase their skills over the summer. Um, and you can see a couple of examples here of what, how that works. Um, summer learning loss increases the achievement gap over time. So it's not just one summer and you get a little behind. Um, each year, students who fall behind over the summer because they don't have access to reading material in their home and they're you know, just not reading in the summer, um, that is a cumulative effect. So that gap gets bigger as the years go on. And you can see it in this illustration as, as well, that as they slide back a little and lose that, as they try to catch up with their, their classmates, eventually you know, they could be as much as a whole grade level behind um, in, their, in their skills. So that's what we want to do, is help close that achievement gap. And I know um, many of you probably read the, the article recently about reading scores in the Burlington School District. And I, I think it is just so important that we help um, so that kids are continuing to read during the summer and help, uh, help with those scores. Um, and I know I've talked about before too that kids that do get behind in their reading skills as they get into you know fourth grade, third grade, they're starting to need to be able to read to learn. Um, <clears throat> and if they aren't at that point yet, they're just gonna fall behind more in all of their subjects. Um, and so bridging that gap in the summer is an important thing. Some of the, the research I've read says that two thirds of the gap, the achievement gap in the ninth grade can be attributed to summer um, skills loss. So we wanna help prevent that. Um, we also want to make it fun, too, um, so kids want to, to do that. We went to the schools, and um, Steve Parker, here locally, um, went with us to some of the schools, and then we also had Rick Eugene, who's a magician out of the Quad Cities, who came down, did a little preview of their programs that they'll do this summer to entice the kids to come. We went to all the Burlington and West Burlington schools. Good. And I just want to thank all of our sponsors for summer reading. Couldn't do it without them. They provide um, goods and services um, that are used as prizes. Um, they also provide funds that we use then for the performers and the other classes that we offer. Um, we have a very full slate of classes. I gave you a copy of the June-July calendar of things that are going on at the library. And um, so a lot of fun things going on. I am going to slide in one thing that is somewhat related. So this, um, this project that we're doing with the um, Burlington Summer Facebook page is to make sure that people have one place to go to really get a lot of resources for the summer. The other magnet that I gave you is another um, one that Cassie at the school district had printed up for us. But it's another site where people can go and there are a lot of different resources pulled together in one place. If you haven't seen this before, I just want to make sure you're aware of it. Um, it's you know, useful year round, not just in the summer, but certainly in the summer as well. So it's Des Moines County Resources, and this came out of the, um, the health department, um, called me over, come across the street one day, and said, let's work on this together. And so there was a print publication um, that, again, it went out of date as soon as it was printed. And the so, yellow one with the, yes, uh, yeah, with the little a, tabs. That's a good resource. It is, it is. And so what we did, oh, gosh, a couple of years ago, is take that and turn it into an online resource. And so that's what this takes you to, is that online resource so that you can click on transportation, you can click on mental health, you can click on schools, Sweet. child care, lots of different topics, and find a list of all the resources locally. So, um, so I hope that's also gonna be helpful to parents year round. Um, but we do, we're really um, happy with having this um, Facebook page, and we're looking forward to seeing how it goes this summer. It's only the second year of our partnership with the school district, so I'm looking forward to see where it goes in the future as well. I have a question about your yeah. schedule. On, on Mondays in June, it says Fitness Monday at 12 yeah. p.m., what happens? <laughs> we, we have um, different fitness organizations in town coming in. So um, 
three or four different companies that are coming in and doing yoga or they're doing other kinds of um, fitness activities. So people actually can come in. It's an active, it's for adults. Um, so you can come and so try out yoga or try out... stay around and decorate my cake and you know, justify eating <laughs> the cake? Is that <laughs> That is idea? kind of... Yeah, <laughs> maybe they should have been on different days, huh? <laughs> yeah. Have my cake and eat it too. <laughs> yeah, and another thing that's new for us on there is the Mega Mondays. Um, so I'll just point those out as, as long as you're mentioning Mondays. Those are for kids, the Mega Mondays. We've had Lego Robotics. Um, we've had Minecraft, we've added in little bits and coding, scratch coding classes for kids. So those will be, be fun to add this year too. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Any, Any other questions for Rhonda before she? Thanks. Thank you. You're doing an awesome job. Now well, let's see if her husband can be as exciting. I doubt it, but let's call him up anyway. Come on, Dad, yeah, Steve. <laughs> It's not a competition. <laughs> Don't worry about we it. Keep telling ourselves and our family. No. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I come before you uh, as the city's historic preservation commission chair. Uh, I come usually uh, every May to, to talk a little bit about uh, what the commission's done in the last 12 months and talk about uh, plans for the future. So uh, there's a, a brief uh, report um, put together by Eric's office. Um, I'm using the certified local government report. Uh, something that we are required to uh, submit to the State Historic Preservation Office every year. And it's a, a nice snapshot of where we've uh, been in the last 12 months. So I can tell you that in 2015, uh, historic places, uh, the sites on the National Register of Historic Places that were altered, we had 108 to 112 North Main Street uh, demolished. We uh, approved certificates of appropriateness uh, for the depot windows at 300 South Main Street. I think that's actually going to happen this year. Um, 615 uh, Court Street, uh, we approved a COA for window and door work uh, at 501 North 5th Street, some porch work, and 621 North 5th Street, uh, a deck towards the rear side yard. Uh, other buildings altered that are on the National Register of Historic Places, I'm not going to go through all the addresses, but we have the 15 buildings that were in the downtown facade project. They're all included in that report of historic sites altered in 2015. Uh, let's see, real quickly, um, last year we did the, the public walking tour of North Hill Park, uh, just around the, the square there, and talked about the different architecture, the buildings there. That was our, our historic preservation outreach. Uh, in 2015, we also, along with the rest of the city, uh, got the, our page updated on the city's website. Uh, I'm very glad to see uh, all the information on there from the historic surveys we've done and the nomination forms. Uh, I use that a lot when I'm contacting different people about uh, projects in our community. Uh, let's see what else. We had uh, six meetings uh, of the commission last year. Uh, we had a quorum at each meeting, so I was glad to have that happen. Uh, we, as a commission, did complete our required training. Uh, we're required uh, as a group to uh, complete some training um, exercises or sessions every year to maintain our status as a certified local government <coughs> community. Uh, so we did that, and I, let's see, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, list off the, uh, my fellow commissioners, Barb Nelson Botts, um, Kay Weiss, I'm gonna see if I do this by mm -hmm. memory, uh, David Rode, Hal Morton, Judy Stevens, and Mark Fisher is our newest commissioner. So we're, we're going to have a full commission of seven members. And uh, in closing, I just want to mention we are going to have a public presentation uh, information session uh, tour this week it, with this Sunday. It's actually going to be a couple days after National Preservation Month in May. But uh, this Sunday at 1 o'clock, we are doing a free uh, public uh, historic tour of this building, Historic City Hall. I think there's a lot of people in the community who hear about City Hall, have driven by it, but have never really been inside it and, and certainly don't know the history of the building, uh, the architecture, the materials used, and we're gonna take a peek into some of the, the lesser known parts of this building uh, that people don't usually get to see. So what time is that? That will be at one o'clock this Sunday. We're gonna meet right in front of City Hall on Washington Street. So it should be exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We were kind of trying to think of a tour we could give this year that we hadn't done before, and we said, why not 
tour this building. <laughs> it's, I think it's, yeah. it's a good idea for it. So, right. Any questions? Thank you. Thank Steve. you, and, and we're happy to serve the city. For You're this. doing a good Thank job, you. too. We sure appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, okay, last but not least, uh, presentation, Imagine Indoor Sports Complex update, Mr. Wow. I assume you're talking about me. Uh, yeah, yes, um, I'm sorry. That would be you. you know, yes, sir. I'm not a free vert, but I am uh, <laughs> Jason Hutchinson. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just not. The free verts are taking over. Um, it's been a little while since I've been to you, but I am here representing Imagine uh, tonight. And with me is Dr. Ash from SEC and Matt Shin, who's been the longtime chair of Imagine for a number of years now. So just as a reminder, when Imagine went through their community visioning process a number of years ago, they came out with five visionary elements for the, the future and what are the things that folks want to see in their community for the long term. And this indoor sports facility was really at the top of that list. And so we've been working fervently for a number of years now to bring this concept to reality. Last time I was here, I asked for uh, some dollars from the set aside that you had received from Wine Guard Company for uh, a financial feasibility study to test the market as it relates to raising money. Can the dollars be raised uh, to put the facility that we would like to have in the community? And the second thing we did with that was test the location at SCC. Do potential investors like the location on the SCC campus? And the results uh, came back very favorably. It's not going to be easy to raise money, but there is a path to making that happen. And so we're uh, very pleased with the support that we had in, I think, about 60 interviews were conducted with potential investors, and they went uh, very, very well. Folks are excited about this opportunity, this facility. They are uh, pleased with the amenities that, that may be offered, and the, lo the location tested well at SEC. Of course, there are uh, folks who have opinions about where the facility should be, but overall, uh, the, the uh, location on the SEC campus tested very well. Some questions, though, that came out of that fundraising study, and that's really what we've been working on since we got the results of that. Uh, one is how do we ensure that this will be a community building on the SEC campus and that long after Dr. Ash and myself and Matt all uh, head out to pasture, uh, how can we ensure that that remains a community building and, and not, uh, not exclusively for the use of SCC. So we've been working on uh, creating a model or a process that will ensure that use. They also had questions about potential operating deficits. Should uh, revenues not hit where we think they uh, should, or should expenses exceed what we think they would? How will we cover that? What is the plan for covering that? And so we've been working on a plan to make that happen as well. And, and we're, we're very close on that. We don't have that completely finalized yet, but we're, we're very close. And so uh, those were, were really the big things that investors wanted to know about, and, and as well as operations and governance and who's going to navigate all those things. So I'm not prepared to answer all those questions for you tonight, but we are, we're very, very close. Uh, in fact, I hope that we can begin the fundraising process and uh, formally answering those questions here before too much longer. What we need at this stage is really the concept drawings to add a little wow factor to uh, the presentation because we need to give, even though we've been talking about this, we need to give people some sense of what the feel of the facility is going to be, what it's going to look like. And so to do that, we really believe that we need to get some uh, 3D engineered uh, floor plans and drawings of the facility and, uh, and uh, narrow in on the cost estimates. So, there's been a, a, a firm that is uh, helping us with that, and we're uh, working on the cost estimates right now. And of course, we want the world, and we don't want to pay much for it. So we're, <laughs> we're doing what we can on that budget. So I come here before you tonight, and I have a memo to give you as well with, uh, with an update. But what we would like is for you to authorize up to $25,000 uh, to reimburse the committee for the architectural and engineering fees uh, that we would have to get us to a point where we can fundraise. So I don't anticipate tapping all 25,000, but I'd like you to authorize uh, that as a reimbursement. So in this case, the Greater Burlington Partnership would be um, uh, paying the bill, and then we would seek reimbursement from uh, from those set aside dollars for that that purpose. Uh, and Dr. Ash, Matt, would anything that you'd like to 
and they are questions. Okay. How much money is in that fund? Three seventy four. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? If you're and if you're okay with that, that would be a resolution that would go on the regular agenda for next next week. If you'd like to wait and have it be the following regular council meeting, that could be done that way as well. That's. I don't have any problem. I don't see. I don't see any reason. To the, to wait. the money's there, and that's. I mean, that's what the money's for. I don't. Have so a would that be one you do? That's the, uh, was that the intended use of the, the funds that uh, the Weingart family provided? I mean, was, he, do we know that he's... He, he that donated it for the, for the indoor recplex, but it certainly wouldn't hurt if we just have some confirmation from him that that's okay. acceptable. It, it was pretty general and open for, it, there, there wasn't a requirement uh, that yeah, it be just, for a city owned or anything like that. It was pretty... Uh, generic, but that would certainly be nice to make sure that it's I just want to acceptable. make sure that, it's, that, that it wasn't intended for brick and mortar and, and not planning or something like that. As long as they don't have a problem with it, I, I don't have a problem with it. Yes, yeah, I haven't asked specifically about this request. In general, I think it was intended to be seed money to get this uh, off the ground. And it, I'm hopeful that we can get to a point where we're fundraising and making this a reality on less than $50,000 of that original uh, $400,000. So I, I, um, I would hope that they would be pleased with that, but we can certainly check and make sure. Council, anything else? It's exciting. It is. Thank you, guys. Almost Thanks. exciting as listening to Mr. Shin pray, but we'll talk about that some other time. You were phenomenal that night. All right. Is there anything else before we get ready to close out then? Mr. Tislin, do you have any comments? Just as Rhonda mentioned, Friday the pool is opening and with new liner installed, so we encourage uh, anyone to come out. Friday's a free day and encourage you to Good. come on out to that. So. Uh, Councilman? Um, I don't know if we want to talk about the after school event now or at the public meeting. I don't know. You can, you can dance on it. We'll, do it. Then, we'll do it both, yeah, both times. Um, so on May 20th, I was had the opportunity to attend Pieces before and after school program year end event at uh, the Y camp. And I know a few other, you know, a few other people were there too. I just talked out to hang out <laughs> for a little bit. You were there. So. Yep. Yeah, so we had a lot of fun. There was so many activities and we got to have hot dogs and then s'mores. I didn't. All the hot dogs were gone. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a really great opportunity, and I look forward to participating in as much as I can moving forward. So I don't, I don't know if you want to talk about it now or you, everyone that went there. <laughs> Or if we want to save it. Yeah, just briefly, I mean, if you haven't been part of that, I mean, it's just really enlightening to see the kids that really experience something for the first time. To me, is was kind of surprising to me. Some of the children that showed up and just saw the lake was kind of, yeah. And then pretty soon we got our toes in the water, and pretty soon we got our knees, and pretty soon we're jumping off the, the dock. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah, we roasted hot dogs, and just it was just a really, really good time to sit around and visit with some people. And, and the turnout was fantastic. We had three busloads of children, but just as importantly, I mean, the DNR showed up, the sheriff's department. I mean, it's just such a yeah, uh, everybody there. Yeah, yeah, it was a collective effort for everybody, and it turned out to really be a great night. Yeah. We had a blast. Oh yeah, and, that was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, so thanks for your support. Oh, it was. Yeah. Fun. And make yeah. sure you notice, Chief Traxel, were you there too? Yeah. Yep. I think you were <laughs> involved with fishing. Towards the end. Yeah. Towards yeah. the end. So, so the fire department was part of that, along with the police. Oh, yeah. Thanks for bringing that. The, the, yeah, the big one didn't get away. <laughs> oh, no. don't, don't make him lie here. <laughs> you know, don't get him started. But that was awesome. Make sure you do uh, bring that up again. Yeah, you know, yeah. Make sure you 
Definitely, yeah. I will. Uh, Councilman Scott? Yeah, I got a few things. Um, I brought up some, uh, some parking issues and sidewalk issues with Public Works and Development Department, and they were so quick to get on it, I, I was, my head was spinning. They, they took care of the problems right away and, and uh, got the message to the, to the violators and, and uh, took care of it. Uh, about the same time, I uh, contacted the chief uh, about uh, some visitors in an abandoned building, and uh, uh, probably within 20 minutes, they were, uh, had officers on site and had uh, uh, taken care of the issue and, and uh, informed the development department what needed to be done to ensure that no more people got in there. And it's, a, it's really an unsafe building for people to be in. And, uh, and we've, uh, I, I just, I couldn't be happier with the response that we got. Um, uh, from Ryan Thornburg out at the Public Works and, and uh, Eric's office and, and the police department. And, um, we're just super pleased. There, there are a couple down things that I, I want to bring up, and I think it's uh, two of them are real important. One is there was an article this weekend uh, about development in the community that uh, uh, the Hawkeye wrote, the Rex Trout, the uh, editor, uh, the, uh, the business editor. And two developments that we have that are recent is uh, Burlington Crossing and Burlington Commons. And, and he called them River Crossing and River Commons. And I don't, I don't know what the motivation, I don't know why, I don't, I don't know if it was just a blatant error or what it was. But I know these folks have spent tens of thousands of dollars promoting themselves, creating a name, creating identity, branding themselves, and trying to get businesses to come to them to, uh, to do some, some development. And I, I, I wish that the Hawkeye would own up to their mistake that they would do a front page article again about this development and call it by its right name. I, I, I think they've done these folks that, have, that are putting millions of dollars into this community in development, they've done them wrong and they could have very well delayed some activity that they, that they uh, could potentially have going on there. And I, 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 uh, I that art, the article was, Tremendous! It's the type of publicity that these uh, businesses need, but they can't have errors like that because what what happens when when I investigate a community and what's going on? I, I look at local newspapers, I look at their websites, I look for things, I look for activities, and that sort of thing. And that's what business people do: they get in, they look at the articles that are written in the Hawkeye about a particular development, and then they follow up on it. And they get on, on a website and they put in uh, uh, River Commons, Burlington, Iowa, and they can't find anything. Uh, or they put River Crossing and they can't find anything. It's, it hurts. Let's, let's correct the mistake and, and, and fix it and, uh, and do right by these uh, developers and not be so proud that, uh, that because the city council member is pointing out that you made a mistake, just swallow your pride and fix it and, and do something right for these folks. Um, enough on that. The the other thing that I I was driving up South Sixth Street from Division, and I was driving south. I drove up the hill. I drove. I got to Etna, and on my right is South Hill Park. I go up to the next block, which is Elm. Between Elm and Maple, there were three young people playing in the street, and I mean playing in the street. They had chalk out, and the entire block from end to end had these drawings and markings, and they were kids having a good time. But one of the kids yelled at me and said, slow down. Uh, I was going slower than the posted speed limit, and when I saw those kids, I slowed down even further. The first thing that went through my mind, why are those kids in the street? There's a park that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting there, and they're playing in the middle of the street and with chalk drawings, and they're yelling at cars as they go by, slow down. I, 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 th I think we've lost our, our uh, vision on what the streets are supposed to be used for and what the parks are supposed to be used for and what the sidewalks are supposed to be used for. And I just see it getting worse and worse every day. I, I, I wish 
there was something we can do. I don't know how we can change attitudes. I don't know if we can do anything at this table. Uh, I, I don't know if we can do it through enforcement, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a mindset that people have got that is dangerous. I mean, if growing up as a kid, I'd probably got blistered for doing something like that. Uh, I wouldn't think of doing that to my uh, grandkids, but I certainly would not allow them to play in the street. Um, it's, uh, it's just, it's a sad, it's a sad thing. I'll get off my soapbox. Sorry, Mayor. Well, I mean, it's a sad commentary, but uh, since you brought it up, um, you, you, you said it. You said that uh, people don't understand the danger. Well, it's, it's changed. I think it's society. I don't think we can do anything about it. We had a danger of playing in the streets, and it wasn't cars. It was that we were going to get a whooping from our parents if we got home. Well, uh, I don't see that as much anymore. So I, I just think uh, the only reason I'm tapping on that is because uh, I just I just have to remind people all the time um, government oversteps because sometimes we get pushed into doing it, but it's government. You know, it's not our job to raise kids. You know, it's not our it's not our job to uh, to help out in those areas. That's where other groups and organizations come in, churches step up, and that sort of thing. So, I, I just like to I just like to remind that that's not it's not the job of government, and you don't want to put that in the hands of government. You don't want to say, well, hey, help me raise my kids, or how can I do this? You know, um, that's that's not what we're here for. We're here to take care of help the streets, the uh, pay the you know turn the lights on, do the water. And sorry about my soapbox, but uh, it's just funny. You can't have it both ways, and. Uh, enough of that. I just want to say uh, the pancake breakfast this Saturday morning was phenomenal. It was a huge uh, crowd. Good to uh, yeah. see them. Um, uh, it, it was just phenomenal. I just want to say thank you to all the volunteers. There were several people there that had been there since 5 o'clock that morning and cooking and that sort of thing. And it was just uh, jam-packed full of people. I, I just kept running to people I hadn't seen forever. So that was phenomenal. And also the criterion was awesome. Uh, uh, I got to talk to some people from a guy from Brazil, you know, I said, what? I said, how did you end up in Burlington from Brazil? He says he travels all over the place. He said, this is my third year. I said, all right. I gave him a bracelet. I said, take this back with you. His buddy said, what about us? <laughs> he said, I only got one. So uh, sorry to his buddies. But uh, what a fantastic weekend in Burlington. Uh, just a lot of things going. It's just great to go downtown Burlington and see all this stuff going and people walking around and mother mothers pushing their kids in strollers and stuff. It was just uh Maybe had flashbacks back when uh, I was a little lad and uh, going down to downtown Burlington. So it was a good weekend. Mayor Pro Tip? I want to piggyback on that. I was going to say kudos to the Parks Department. Uh, Snake Alley looks gorgeous. And, uh, I'm sure everybody had to, <coughs> had to notice how, how really good it looked. And the downtown, of course, and the riverfront and the, the Kiwanis, they always do a great job down there, don't they? It's yeah, just, they do. It is amazing what they do. So kudos to those guys, Eric, if you would, please. Um, also, I want to say kudos to the golf course. If you've not been out to the golf course, folks, you're missing something. You should get out there. Uh, Jim, what is the deal with the groundbreaking on Thursday? Can you tell us about that? I don't have much on it. All I had was the email that uh, just, do you have anything on Jason? Uh, I think we're waiting for confirmation on the time. I have sent it to level left, yeah. but I don't know that it's Which is which is kind of what I'd gotten you as a tentative time of 11. But we'll forward on that whenever, yes. whenever we have a confirmation that yeah, I don't want to miss that. time and actual location on site. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm done. I have nothing at this time. But you reserve the right? I reserve the right to speak whenever I feel like. Excellent. City Manager. Uh, <laughs> Lead conference registration. Uh, Jim, you've already mentioned that you're interested in going. Right. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk with Katie about getting you s set up on that. That's September 14 to 16. Uh, for those who do have an interest in attending, please let us know as soon as you can. It helps us specifically to get the hotel room reserved. Uh, they end up filling up fairly quickly and getting getting booked. Where is it this year? In Des Moines. I'm sorry. Um, goal setting this this Thursday, three to seven here in council chambers. Make sure to, hopefully you're all able to be here for that. Is that gonna be on, Stephanie? Are we gonna broadcast that? We no. hadn't talked, we had, we kind of talked about that, had to ask from at least one council member, or one staff member, no, we weren't planning on That's it. That's fine. 
but it, that is an, an open meeting. Right. So, um, our new assistant city manager for public works is supposed to start next Tuesday. He goes through his drug screening and all of his paperwork, I think, on Monday. So, looking forward to having him be able to get in here and get started. Um, the liner looks really nice, so please do get a chance to see awesome. see that, those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, parking ramp down here, 4th and Washington, or whatever it is, 2nd and Washington, 3rd and Washington. Um, Not 2nd. Yeah, Main Street. Um, <laughs> that, uh, they started work on that today. So the, and that the plan on that, their goal is to be done in 10 days, I think, for the, so their goal is to be done before steamboat days. Uh, that was one of the things that we tried to get them to know that they needed to be able to work around. Um, Eric, what's our involvement with South Hill neighborhood uh, in regards to pool passes? And I don't know if you had something else. But. I guess <clears throat> we've been working with them. The South Hill neighborhood got a, a grant through uh, CNH to uh, part of it provide uh, pool passes to individuals uh, South Hill and citywide that want to go to the pool and use the pool throughout the summer. They also funded uh, swimming lessons for kids. They sent out uh, notice to, through the schools to, uh, for free swimming lessons uh, for individuals. Uh, and I think we had let's see, 65 or 85 kids sign up through that program. Um, and then they're sponsoring this Friday, uh, free day at the pool, kind of as our, our grand opening with the liner and uh, becoming open. So we've been working with them on uh, trying to coordinate that and making sure kids that uh, have the passes uh, can get into the pool and they're reimbursing through that. So uh, hopefully we can get some new users to the pool and um, bring them back through the bus system and work well with the South Hill group on that. Did we do somewhat of a discounted rate on that? Yeah, we did a, a discounted rate on the the pool passes, the daily passes on that, I think is 50 cents uh, discounted rate for the, the passes that they're doing through this program. And I did a regular rate for the swimming lessons just based on the need there and mm -hmm. for the, the teachers for that. So uh, we tried to work with them as much as we could on that. And it's a great program to get kids to, that might not otherwise get out to the pool and learn to Fantastic. swim. Fantastic, so. awesome, awesome. And then with Juneteenth, did you have background information on what you've done for utilities? Yeah, and I can forward that on to the <clears throat> council as well. I did have a discussion with Reverend uh, Orlando Dial, who's the treasurer for the NAACP, and uh, kind of talked to him. Uh, he called me after the last council meeting and just wanted to express they they know the facilities at the uh, park there, White Park, and they're aware of them, and uh, they don't have concerns for their event uh, with him. And um, I think you said Fred Say and. Um, Lynn Stinson, they're the organizers of it, and they said they welcome all comments on uh, on the park and on the event, but they said the comments that were brought up weren't representative of them as the organizers of the event and of the NAACP. They're just individuals that came forward, but he said uh, he welcomes any improvements to the park, but they, they know the limitations of the park and uh, have looked at other parks as well and may consider other parks in the future, but just based on the history and significance of the park to them as an organization that they willingly go there and realize uh, the limitations and he said they bring in a generator and have other facilities there so uh, I did provide him with a, a memo on the electrical we have a 100 amp circuit in the park there's three 20 amp outlets uh, they aren't might not be in the location they exactly want but that changes year to year and kind of provided him on a background on what could be utilized there with uh, extension cords or power that could be supplied uh, just so that they're not oversupplying the power that's provided and also on the drinking fountain there's a working drinking fountain and spigot there and uh, we can work with him on that and very appreciative of everything and said we'd work with them as much as we can and have that open dialogue there so but he just wanted to express that just from their organization as the organizers of Juneteenth that they they're aware of the park and Thank happy with sure. how we've worked with them in the past so and um, Stephanie, did you receive something from GFOA? Could you let the council know what that was? It wasn't a check. It wasn't a check, no. <laughs> Good question. No, they don't give you any money. 
Um, it was the certification award for the June 30th, 2015 audit. So just the one you put in every year in end of December. So we got notification that we were certified again. So that's the third year in a row yes. that you've received the certificate of excellence in financial reporting. That means yes. you're doing good, good yes. right? Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Less yeah. comments this year, so that's good. So, but good they always deal. have to find something wrong with it, or <laughs> the reviewers yeah. aren't doing their job. So exactly. So Sounds Ste like you are, though. Good job, Steph. Good yeah. job. Yes. Thank Stephanie's you. department's done very well very with that. Well. And I think that can kind of cover what I have for now. What about the new fire truck? The new fire truck. You got that delivered a week and a half ago. It is awesome, man. Yeah, they're, they're jacked about that. Yeah. So we picked up the new engine. It'd be about a what, week and a half ago that we brought it. We had three days of training with it last week with the manufacturer. Now this week they're doing some in-house training, putting the hose on it, that kind of thing. Uh, Saturday at 10:30 at Central Station, we're going to do a backing in ceremony. There's a press release out there somewhere. I'm not sure where it's went, but uh, anybody's invited. They're going to do a a wash down thing where they spray the truck with some water and then the guys push it into the station it's a ceremony that's this saturday this saturday at 10 30. you know so we're, we're very thankful thank you to the citizens and the council for uh, letting us purchase that new engine so very excited that'll be the first day after we push it in it'll be officially in service for the fire department that's so awesome awesome thank Good you deal. thank you thank you, thank you. <clears throat> continuing to talk with uh, developers on the greer's restaurant proposal um, met with them this last week I think that we're tentatively scheduled to meet with them again towards the end of this week uh, just trying to get a letter of intent that ex that says what they'd kind of like to see in terms of a lease proposal and terms um, one of the things that Jason brought up now that he's left the room um, he uh, had mentioned that uh, just to ask the question in regards to the BNSF lot, uh, catty corner from the fire department, if there might be some interest in us acquiring that for future parking. Uh, so as you think about things for the city to look at uh, doing over the next months, years, that is something to put out there for you to think about whether we wanted to acquire that to ha be able to just have a little bit of flexibility for control of, of uh, land for parking to occur over time i don't know whether they'd be interested in turning it over to us but uh, and i'm sure there might still be some environmental issues with that but that's yeah. those are at least things if you have an interest we can <coughs> pursue and see what what might be potential <coughs> be for possibilities um, and we have not gotten a contract um, ready yet for construction manager agency form with the US Bank building uh, we still need to get um, cost back uh, what proposals would look like for a cost of providing service and evaluate those prior to bring, bringing it back to council so that's still in the works um, I would not anticipate that for next Monday um, being so we haven't gotten it out to them yet to get a proposal back um, but we are still moving forward on trying to get that ready for you for consideration as we move move into this next month and I think that's enough for me okay, okay. Hey, thank you if there's nothing else then good all right thank, thank you, you staff thank you council <laughs>